reporting for North Beach TV. And I'm Scott Johnston, and we're here with David Rubin Aslan and his wife Denise. And David is a published author. We've got some of his, his work here. And he's also um, a, a movie director, screenwriter. Uh, he and his wife are both producers, and they live in Ocean Shores to boot. So, tell us what's going on. Well, um, a number of years ago, I was approached by an independent film maker out of uh, Riverside, California, Boris Novak, who got, uh, he heard about me through a time that my uh, novel, um, Luke Guru, The Beast of Harmony Falls, was battling against Anne Rice's. She had, besides her vampire book, she had a werewolf book out, and our books were going back and forth uh, for the number one position, best-selling uh, um, uh, werewolf novel on Amazon for about a week. And so I got my little 15 seconds of fame. And so people were coming out of the woodworks, contacting me about different things. And and Boris got a hold of me and wanted to, you know, he, he said, hey, I read your book. I think it would transition well to uh, uh, to film. And we started talking about it. Now, this is a number of years ago, a bunch of years ago. Anyways, we started getting very serious about the idea again. And we, we took it a few steps for more forward than that. Um, we were all the way down to presenting budgets, and I had written a screenplay. Um, we changed the name from Loop Guru, The Beast of Harmony Falls. We thought that wouldn't be too good up on, on screen, so we went to Harmony Falls. We abbreviated that, and, and all things looked good. And then, like well, everybody, we all, everybody got blindsided by COVID yet. And it literally just tanked the idea. The gentleman that was interested in maybe throwing uh, some money at the project, um, he pulled out. And it looked as if the whole thing was just going to go away. But we had developed a screenplay, we had developed a budget concepts, we had developed uh, uh, areas that we wanted to film at and, and, and take it. And I, one night I was talking to my lovely wife Denise here. And I, you know, and I, she knew that I was a little depressed about the whole thing just going away because it's not in my nature to let go of anything. And um, she just looks at me and she goes, why don't we do it ourselves? And I'm like, what? She goes, she goes well, you know, we have a very talented son who uh, is a musician and, um, and we have all the connections that you'd made along the way. Uh, and, you know, why don't we... Just do it ourselves. At that time, I thought we could use a cinematographer, a friend of mine, um, but uh, as a backup, but we weren't sure. But we decided to contact him, uh, Johnny Christofferson out of Portland. So we had a meeting in Portland with with Johnny, and uh, he just, you know, I was expecting him to say, "Are you kidding me?" No, uh, but he said, "Why not?" And, and then, then suddenly, <laughs> we were like, "Oh my God, what have we started here?" Um, but long story short, we ended up um, going forward with it, and uh, we got a couple of small investors, very small, very limited, were by far the <laughs> majority uh, um, of people that, or persons that put money into the situation. But, um, but it, it ended up uh, great, and we, we got some, uh, uh, a lot of local actors out of the Cowles County area, um, a couple actors out Ocean Shores, actually. And um, and it, it in, was Portland. in Portland, and and, and then uh, to really help the situation, a good friend of mine, Don Valderamos, who has been in lots of different movies and TV series, he lives in Hollywood. Um, he um, volunteered to, on his own dime to come up and do a cameo in the movie, and so that gave us some you know some cachet right there, and uh, so it just um, kind of took off. And so now we're on Amazon Prime. Yes, we are. Um, Harmony Falls on Amazon Prime. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, the when we first finished the film, you know, we wanted to try to, you know, garnish some accolades, you know, and so we shotgunned the thing out to a number of uh, uh, film festivals, both international and well, both domestic and international, and. To our amazement, um, we won, uh, gosh, uh, I think we took uh, second place in the um, uh, Prague 
uh, International Film Festival, and we took a first place uh, in, uh, in the Wallachia, Transylvanian yeah. um, uh, uh, Film Festival, and we took a first place uh, in the Chicago Indie Film Awards, which was mind-blowing. Uh, and then... Uh, and Best Monster. And Best Monster. Yeah. Actually, we won the Best Monster in 13 Horrors, I yes. think, was, was that film festival. Um, but anyway, so that... And then you fast forward from there, and when we finally did a release of the movie, we did a premiere in Longview, Washington, at the beautiful um, Columbia Theater for the Performing Arts. And it was a sellout. We, I guess we were the only movie. It, it, they primarily do performing arts now, but they still do some movies. And according to Kelly Ragsdale, the uh, wonderful uh, manager of the Columbia Theater, we were the first film in over 20 years to ever sell out the theater. And we had a gala grand opening. We had limousines. We had red carpet. We had paparazzi. Uh, it was it was really something. And I think that we sold close to a thousand seats. Wow, that sounds fun. <laughs> so it was a great. Event. It, <laughs> it was, was it was it was awesome big, night. it was an amazing night. So then, after, shortly after that, um, we started, um, uh, you know, going through the process of, of, uh, of seeking to get it on uh, uh, streaming services, because the tree, you, know, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, why don't you go into movie theaters? If you're not a large movie, done usually by a 20th Century Fox or United Artists or something, um, it's extraordinarily difficult to get your movies into theater anymore. Um, but, thank goodness, uh, for the little guy, uh, the streaming services have happened, and that has leveled the playing field. All right, now tell us the fun story about this suit. Well, the suit here, which was made for us by a Hollywood FX company, was handmade, um, and um, gosh, it took them almost four months to make it for us, and it was pretty expensive. Um, in the movie, you asked me about Brandon, because mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know Brandon Wine. Um, Brandon plays the character um, John Chastel's Yvondan, who um, is the the werewolf in human form, and he was also going to be the werewolf inside the suit here, in which we affectionately named uh, Cuddles. This is Cuddles here. He's in the, he's very cuddly, um, and um, but when we when we were filming in the middle of the night up near um, in Silver Lake at a cabin uh, up near. Kelso, Castle Rock, Washington. Um, you have to first put this blackout hood on so your face doesn't come through the, the mouth and, and you can barely see out of it. And then when you put the hood on, it's, it, the actor is almost blinded. I mean, almost blind. And it was the middle of the night we were filming. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning and we put it on him and Brandon suffered um, vertigo, um, dizziness, disorientation so bad that he couldn't do it, and we tried and tried, and he would take a break and splash some water it and put it back on, and he just was, it was making him just violently ill. So, we were like, oh my gosh, what do we do? And one of the kids, one of the guys up there at the time, um, Garrett Payton, who um, was helping with doing some sound, um, you, know, you know, holding the boom mic and things like that, uh, along with Mo, um, he um, said, yeah, I can do it. And even Garrett's also the bass player in the, in the band Ghost Eyes. And we go, oh, geez, you know, okay, okay. And we put the suit on him, and lo and behold, because of his youth, because he's also quite a bit younger than Brandon, because of his youth, he was able to do all of these jump up and downs and run outs and, and takes over and over and over again. Uh, so anyway, so Brandon is the werewolf in human form, but the werewolf inside the suit was Garrett Payton. And so we're... Um, we're on Amazon Prime right now, and we're going to be looking at some other uh, streaming services very shortly. And we're doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. So well that we decided to make some more movies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe that's a segue into um, what uh, our, our current project that we just wrapped as far as the filming portion, and that Lisa Hayes here is in. Um, the movie that uh, is uh, that we currently wrapped on filming, it's actually in post-production, Red Tide, Vampires of the Moor. We filmed a lot here in Ocean Shores, actually, and around. We filmed some go as the gentleman's driving through the town, uh, and uh, there's certain landmarks that I think everybody's going to pick up on. Some have big mouths and a lot of teeth. 
<laughs> we'll let your imagination take it from there. And uh, also um, out in Roosevelt Beach and uh, Pacific Beach, and actually right here in our home, uh, was, there was a couple of scenes filmed. Um, but, uh, uh, and then, then um, the rest of it, uh, all, all Pacific Northwest locations, we filmed over in the desert, over near um, uh, the Lake Lidor Caves, inside the caves there in the desert. We filmed uh, in uh, Kelso, Washington. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and that brings us back to uh, Harmony Falls, um, the movie that's out on Harmony, uh, the, the movie that's out on Amazon Prime right now. Aside from doing some filming here, Again, it was all Northwest. We filmed um, a lot up around Amboy and Cougar, uh, but near uh, Mount St. Helens. We filmed uh, in Longview and in Kelso and in Toledo. We were actually, uh, the P Toledo Police Department were fabulous. They let us film for two days. We basically took over the Police Department of Toledo. They even shut down the main street of Toledo for, <laughs> us, to, for us to film, uh, and they were great. And uh, uh, also, um, the eight caves. The eight, oh, yeah, yeah, and that's that's kind of an interesting story, I think. To date, uh, um, uh, to at least until the point of where, where we were filming there, um, no movie company for just entertainment purposes had ever been granted access by the state of Washington, granted permit by the state of Washington to film inside the eight caves. Documentaries, you know, like a you know. Um, such and such explorer, you know, or, you know, or some you know, discovery channel, or something like that. Yeah, a little bit here and there, but, but nothing just for entertainment. So at that time, we were the only uh, film crew to be allowed to film exclusively inside the Ape Caves. And, and if you're familiar with the lava tubes, which are the Ape Caves up near Mount St. Helens, they go on for, one of them goes on for about three and a half miles, and usually you go up there and all you see is dancing flashlights and dancing headlights and everything because it's a very popular place. Well, we had permit. We owned the entire Ape Cave system uh, for the entire time we were able, uh, enabled, uh, allowed, granted to, to shoot, and that was absolutely cool and creepy. You want to talk about a setting for a horror movie? Um, I mean, if it wasn't for the lights that we had, you would be in, in absolute darkness. And we filmed there in the middle of the winter time, and we actually we, we had to walk through, we had to walk a mile uphill through snow. <laughs> Sounds like, yeah, it's true. Yeah, with all our gear. <laughs> Sounds like a story uh, that your granddad would mm -hmm. tell you. But we did we we with all the gear. We had to mar march up uh, through the snow because uh, all the parking lots were shut down because of the big in the winter time, and we um, packed all of our gear in there. And the interesting thing was, it was absolutely freezing cold um, outside. But once you got inside the caves, they stay, it's not warm, but they stay at 42 degrees all year. It could be 100 degrees out or, or 20 below zero, and it's inside the eight caves, it's 42 degrees. Uh, which is, you know, what about. Which was good for you. My job was standing on the top of the eight caves, the entry, for <laughs> like four to five hours while you guys disappeared. That, was, that wasn't fun? No. Oh, because we had lots of fun. It was cold and scary because I didn't know if you guys were ever coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really neat because the state of Washington made arrangements that we had the sheriff's department yeah. up there blocking yes. everything off for us. And yeah, we were we were quite the big shots. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> um, but um, anyhow, um, uh, now that, that takes us back to the present of, uh, of the movie that we're working on now. The, uh, Harmony, excuse me, uh, Red Tide, Vampires of the Moor. It's in post-production, which means basically we're doing um, digital editing, uh, adding Foley effects, music scores, um, you know, just polishing it from every perspective. And um, of course that takes at least as long as it takes to film the thing, which takes months. Um, and. Uh, and then what I'm really excited about is I'm presently writing the um, uh, screenplay to Red Tide Salazar, which will be the prequel to, um, to this vampire movie, Red Tide Vampires of the Moor. We decided to do the prequel of that because, let's face it, vampires are hot right now. I mean, there's television shows and movies and everything else. And, Nicholas Cage just got in on, on, on a comedy one called <laughs> What's a Redfield. But it's so they're very, very hot right now, and so we decided we would we would run with that. 
At first we were thinking about doing the sequel to uh, Harmony Falls, but we're jumping right into the prequel of, uh, of the vampire movie. And I'm very excited about that. We'll be filming uh, a lot of it, again, in many of the same areas. And it uh, should be fun. It will be fun. <laughs> and, and uh, oh, and by the way, um, Lisa here, uh, she did have a real nice part in my last movie that's in post-production now, but I was so impressed by her, honestly, and, and, and we have, what, close to 50 actors that are kind of in our acting, our immediate acting pool. Um, Lisa did such an outstanding job that I um, offered her, and she accepted, thank goodness, uh, a, um, um, a co-starring role in um, Red Tide uh, Salazar. She's going to be playing, she's going to be playing what she's gifted at, she's going to be playing a reporter. Um, a, a newspaper reporter, an Astorian, an Ast from Astoria, newspaper reporter, and uh, so uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I hope you are. I'm so excited. <laughs> so this really has been a family effort. Tell us about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, our son Mo is involved, and he his band Ghost Eyes, and this on the second movie he actually is the cinematographer. And so that's really exciting, and we actually have purchased all our own camera equipment and have been going from there. He was the, he was the sound engineer for John Christopherson and also backup camera person. And, and Mo, uh, our son Mo, he, has, he took some cinematography in college and things like that. So it's not like he wasn't, uh, um, he, he had the skill set already, he just he didn't have the opportunity. So we just bit the bullet and bought this incredibly sexy camera and equally sexy lenses and and then suddenly a friend of mine, um, uh, Greg Campbell, uh, who's been very instrumental and also acts in the movies, pardon me, um, he um, used to be uh, involved in movie making and he had a ton of lighting equipment and, and all kinds of different really cool toys that he pretty much just threw into the, the mix so suddenly we had just tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment just falling from the sky into our laps. So it just kind of all organically came together. And like Denise was saying, our son Mo Aslan, he, um, uh, he not only is the cinematographer of the movie, but he, in, la in the last movie, Harmony Falls, he does 100% of all of the uh, orchestrated music score. Um, and it's, it's all done symphony style, and he wrote Every, he wrote all the strings, the, the violins, the violas, the cellos, blah, 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 the, the percussion. He, he wrote each individual piece of music, so even though it's done digitally, it could be done by an orchestra, and they would have all the sheet music, because he's, he's done these extreme. He, he, he got his background originally from the orchestra world. Uh, he was in orchestra for many years through school. And, um, but uh, now he's a, you know, he's a guitar player and a bass player, and yada, yada, and, and his, his alternative music band, Ghost Eyes, he and uh, Eric McTamini and uh, Garrett Payton, uh, the three of them are the band Ghost Eyes. But they, um, and they do appearances in our movies, they're up on stage and, and such, and uh, uh, it's a lot of fun. But, um, but our son Mo has been, um, uh, he is pivotally important. I don't think we could uh, you know, do what we do without him. And his, his, he's a lot more talented than I am, let's put it that way. So when you're not writing books and making movies, what else do you do? Well, we own another business, it's called Express Yourself, and it takes individuals with um, developmental disabilities out into the community to either have fun and to work on goals. Uh, specialized habilitation is what it's called, and we just have a good time, and actually Mo Aslan, um, Dave, and I run that business. And we also, some of our other children have been involved at different times. We actually have five boys. We serve clients from here in Ocean Shores, Aberdeen Hoquiam, uh, Cos Cosi, Cosmopolis, um, on up uh, towards, um, um, what's, what's the road that heads up out of? Uh, well, we do all, all of Grays Harbor and all of Pacific County. Yeah, yeah, wow. and we, we, go, we go as far as Long Beach. We have clients in Long Beach yeah. as well. And, uh, and, and Raymond and all points between. Um, a lot but, of driving. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of driving. And that, and I guess uh, my other hobby at this point, at one time it was profession. It's hard to see, hard to 
believe that. This is really awesome. It's hard to believe it to look at me now, but um, I used to own a, a martial arts um, studio in Longview, Washington, um, Progressive Taekwondo and Mixed Martial Arts Academy, and I'm a fourth degree black belt in Taekwondo, and I've studied some other styles as well. So, and, and, and the reason I say that, I get, and I, and I still stay active on a little, on a limited basis. I'm still called uh, to uh, ref different larger tournaments throughout the Northwest, primarily the Quest of Champions tournaments in Lewiston, Idaho, and Yakima, and some different places. But, um, but that, that, and um, uh, and and some people ask me, how come so far in all my movies there's been little segues, little segments anyway, segments of uh, fight scenes, and they're and they're all obviously martial arts style. Well, it's because of my background and about. 80% of the male actors in my movies are friends of mine from the martial art world. Um, <laughs> I, the, the big joke was if anybody ever gave us a bad time on, on set because we usually have about 30, 20, 25 to 30 black belts uh, in the room at any given time. And some are, some, some are gals too, but mostly. But uh, it's, it's because that's, that's the, the world that I was in for many, many years and so that's where my friends are. And, if you're going to make movies, you you know you 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 look to the outside, but you also look to the inside. Friends, people you know, they're all they're already talented, and and a lot of these guys, you know, they had done lots of theater, and some had done, you know, some parts here and there, and you know, so uh, so that's uh, that kind of goes from there. But Stephen Smith, um, Sensei Stephen Smith, uh, he owns a, a Gojuru uh, Karate um, Dojo in Lewis in Idaho. He plays um, Sheriff Bud O'Brien in Harmony Falls. And the gentleman that plays um, uh, his uh, um, sheriff, his deputy, sheriff's deputy, uh, Charlie Redtail, is uh, uh, played by uh, Mike Fisher. And Mike Fisher got his black belt through me. David and Denise, thank you so much for including me in the new movie and the last movie. And I wanted to let you know that I thought of the two of you when I saw this. I wanted to give you this Tin Man oh. because I have to get my phone out for this because I remember on Facebook that you posted, as one who loves great quotes, this is one of my all-time favorites and it's from The Wizard of Oz. A heart is not judged by how much you love, but by how much you are loved by others. And I actually picked this up locally at Anchor Avenue Thrift Store and I hope you like it. Oh. Are you kidding me? That's that some. Awesome. Oh, great. And that it's going to be one of your, it's going to go in your magic that, cut and, here. And, <laughs> and that is, that is, that is my absolute all-time favorite quote. Is, I think it's, uh, there's a little bit of a philosophy for life in that quote. Yeah. Sweet. Thank you. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. I mean, I, I understand.